there's this in the Amp Dino world, there are mm. people who are upset saying that, well, I shouldn't say upset, but there are people who say, well, now these companies over years and years and years of seeing people dyno amplifiers, now uh, these companies are doing this certain thing to hit this certain metric and make everything look good. But mm. the other specs or factors like make it a crappy amp. So it can do dynamic peak power of some crazy number, but for you know 0. 0.00018 milliseconds or something like that. One of, mm. one of my buddies made a short about this. And then I see people on ASR have talked about how manufacturers are pumping out these cheap little DACs and these cheap little amplifiers that have really good SNR because Amir puts so much weight on SNR with the notion, and I'm not saying he's wrong, but mm. with the notion that if it has a really good sign ad score, then that means other engineering excellence is placed into other bits and pieces of the amplifier. Mm. But the argument that others make is that, well, that may not necessarily be true. And these little amplifiers are putting out 30 watts, you know, at four ohm or eight ohm. So mm. who gives a flying fart if it has an SNR of 118 and it's doing 30 watts because this other one has an SNR of... Uh. Or SINAD, I should say, SINAD. Uh, the, what, what, what's SNR for those that don't know? Signal to noise ratio. Um, and okay. it's really, it's SINAD. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's combined, right? There you go. Look at that. Um, but basically, it's like how much what's, distortion. What's SINAD? what's SINAD? It's signal to noise and distortion combined. It's just an acronym for it. Okay. And it's basically like, uh, it's measuring the level of distortion and noise. So at low volumes, you guys probably know that you pretty much the, the signal it can be washed out by noise at low volumes but as you turn the volume up the volume and the signal of the amplifier or whatever it is that you're listening to is going above the noise floor like a, mm. a lot more higher and higher until it gets to the point where the amplifier clips or the outputs of the rca's clip or whatever and then it's just straight distortion pretty much only from there uh, there are exceptions to that but that's pretty much what it is so mm -hmm with Amir and ASR focusing so much on Synad as their target uh, for ex engineering excellence, again, not saying it's wrong, the, the argument is then, well, who cares if it's got 118 dB of Synad if it's only doing 30 watts because this other one has 110 dB, dB of Synad and it's doing 300 watts or 200 watts or something. Mm -hmm. The point being that those levels of Synad are so far below the, the detectability of distortion or um, audibility that it doesn't matter, right? So when you get to, say, 80 dB of Synad, uh, most people are kind of saying that's their personal cutoff, then mm -hmm. who cares anymore, right? Quit putting so much weight on Synad and ignoring the other factors. And I mean, is I there think there's some audible difference to that, right? So... Is it even an audible difference in the SNR? Uh, no, I mean, I couldn't tell you. I know I've seen Gene talk about it. I'm pretty sure I've seen Amir say like 90 dB is like maybe his personal cutoff or maybe that's what he's found in, in literature and research. But those two numbers, I'll just, with those guys, I'll split the difference and say 85 dB. Okay, I, I take their word for it that that's reasonable. And anything lower than that value, not, not necessarily doing anything for you, mm, right? Okay. You're not going to hear the difference between 90 and, and 85 or something like that. So why yeah. not get more power? And uh, anyway, the long way of saying that is it's interesting that you say that because now that we're doing measurements, you know, and, and they're becoming more prominent with reviewers for speakers, it kind of makes me wonder if manufacturers are going to say, well, this guy's got a huge, I don't have a big enough falling, but let's say Andrew Robinson had measurements and he was doing the same thing I'm doing, right? <laughs> who's got like 300 and something or maybe more than that at this point subscribers or or randy um or steve guttenberg or any of those huge audio channels with 200k plus subscribers who's to say that a manufacturer wouldn't be tempted to then go and engineer the quote perfect product for that reviewer or that person yeah yeah because like me i know i like plus or minus six degrees of of radiation with like joe was saying i like reasonably neutral on axis off axis pretty much everybody does I want a little bit extra base. I think a lot of people do, right? So mm -hmm. manufacturer could do that just to get on the radar of some of these guys and get a whole bunch of sales just through the roof. That wouldn't be a bad thing though. See, oh, in, no, in no, my opinion, I think like the more you try to, to uh, you know, because it's almost it, it's like you're, like um, it's almost like you're, you're making a speaker that you know people would like. Yeah. Instead of, like, like if you look at like Samsung, 
and these TV men, you know, like especially for like TVs, like, they don't care what the consumer wants. They're on their track. They're on their situation. We're getting into 2024 soon, and the Sony TVs still only have two HDMI 2.1 ports, one of which was an eARC. So if you have a soundbar, like Caleb from Digital Trends was just talking about this because he just had the new it's A95L, right? Mm-hmm. He has eARC going to the uh, soundbar, and then he's got one port on the TV for a PlayStation 5 and an Xbox Series X. So now he has to get a switcher kind of thing so it's like these things like why it's been out for a while now it's been out for a few years can we do that uh yeah. then Sa- samsung is just like oh hey you know yeah we like hdr 10 plus we're not going to do dolby vision lg won't do hdr 10 plus panasonic will but panasonic isn't sold in the united states it's like they, they all do their own thing instead of like mm-hmm. actually caring what what the consumers want whereas what you're talking about they're actually taking into the consideration like okay if this reviewer likes it likes likes the sound signature of whatever blank whoever is following him will probably there'll probably be a big a large amount of people that actually like the same thing yeah so that's not a that's actually not a bad thing i well, think I, I like to think that i'm representative of the viewer right or the consumer yeah. Yeah. right when i recommend something it's because not necessarily because i like it for myself it's more like i think people in this group will like this right I have I have enough speakers, right? I don't I'm not in the market to buy uh, any yeah. speakers. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's more about what do other people like. So I'm kind of a representative, I feel like. I'm representing them. Now I can't speak for everybody. There might be reviewers who are only about them, right? Okay. Well, but here's the thing. If these guys start making stuff to specific specifications that we've said that we look for, right? Like as if they're gaming the system. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, that's first of all, that's a good thing, right? Go ahead and hit those specs. But we're also, you know, we're not stupid, right? We're going to look at those. Okay, that's good that they hit this. But look at what they sacrificed. Yeah. Right? Okay, well, that's that's a bad thing. You hit these marks, but you made the wattage really low. That's not good. Yeah. Right? yeah. It's kind of like Hoffman's Iron Law that we always talk about. Okay, yep. you made a real small speaker. It hits, it hits really low, but, like, it's very low volume. Yeah, the okay. sensitivity is like 60 dB. <laughs> you know, so there's always going to be a trade-off. And we're we're not stupid. So we're going to look at all those things and say, hey, good job over here. Good job over here. Bad yeah. job on that. All right, everybody. We do the Daily Hi-Fi Podcast every Monday, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So make sure you join up to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash daily hi-fi. And we will see you there for the big show every Monday. Yeah.